With gain compensation, you've got one degree freedom, a gain K that you can play with. With only one degree freedom, there's only so much you can do. You adjust the gain to get your desired overshoot. If you're willing to have a little bit more complex compensator, I can speed up the system. That's a lead compensator. So the problem here is design a feedback system with a compensator K of S to give a desired overshoot as well as speed up the system. The presumption is that it's already a type one system, so I have no error for step input. I just want to get a quicker system. A uh, compensator that does that is the lead compensator. The general form of a lead compensator is at a zero anywhere you want, at a pole that's bigger than the zero, and a gain K. The purpose of the zero is to cancel one of your poles, the one that's causing you trouble, and replace it with a faster pole to speed up the system. As an example, let's look at the following cubic system for your plant. So here's your plant. It's a type one system, no error for step input. Closing the feedback loop, I get a response, but suppose it's not fast enough. Add your lead compensator to speed it up. If I ignore the pole for now and just look at the zero, I can see what happens in MATLAB as I add the zero somewhere. Here in MATLAB, I've taken the third order system, drawn the root locus with RL tool, and I've also added a zero. That'll be the zero from the lead compensator. As I take the zero, put it very, very far left, I have basically done nothing to the zero. The zero hasn't improved the system at all. As I slide the zero to the right, notice that the root locus is shifting left, meaning it's speeding up. Step response is getting faster. I'm also getting less overshoot. If I move the zero too far right, I've actually slowed down the system. And too far can actually make it go unstable. So the trick in a lead compensator is speed up the system as much as possible which you kind of see experimentally, means you put the zero right around here. Cancel the slowest stable pole, keeping the pole the origin there because that makes it a type one system and I want to keep a type one. So that's the rule for designing a lead compensator. First place the zero. Place the zero to cancel your slowest stable pole. Again, remembering don't cancel the pole at the origin. First, it's not stable. And second, I like the pole at the origin. It makes it a type one system. Uh, so with that, I would take the pole at minus 5 and get rid of it. Replace it with the pole similar faster than minus 5. The rule of thumb is typically put the pole similar between 3 and 10 times faster than you started with, meaning put the pole somewhere between 15 and minus 50. You can see that on the root locus plot, I've added a 0 at minus 5. I'll now add a pole at minus 15, giving you that root locus plot. I could then adjust the gain to get your desired overshoot, perhaps. And you're done with your design. Mathematically, you can see that by taking your new system, I've canceled the pull at minus 5, so I haven't drawn it in. Draw the root locus for the new system with poles at 0, minus 10, minus 15. Find the spot on the root locus with your desired damping ratio, right here. At that point, just like any point on the root locus, find k so that g times k is minus 1. Here it turns out the solution is at s equals 6, at minus at 120 degrees. At that point on the root locus, g times k is minus 1, meaning you're on the root locus. Pick k so that the gain at that point is 1. So here k is 6.84. So the net result in MATLAB is we'll have this. I've placed the dominant pole at 6.84. That's this guy. I've got a fourth order system. So I've got one pole at minus 15, shooting left. It's off the graph. A second pole to conjugate. And another pole that's right on top of 0. Net result is I've now got my lead compensator. 6.84, cancel the pull at minus 5, replace it with a pull at minus 15. If you want to implement that compensator, I've got three constraints. My gain k, 
zero at minus five, pull at minus 15. A circuit to build the Lee compensator is shown. I've got four degrees of freedom. With four degrees of freedom and three constraints, something's arbitrary. So arbitrarily, let's make that a one-neg resistor. To find the values, first let the capacitor disappear. If I let the frequency go to infinity, C becomes a short that shorts out this part of the system. I'm left with one degree freedom. As S goes to infinity, these terms go away, and I have a gain of 6.84, making this 146 kilo ohms. Next, let S go to zero. At S equals zero, these terms go away. I'm left with a gain up top of 2.28. As S goes to zero, the capacitor becomes an open circuit and doesn't matter. The gain then is one meg over the total resistance needs to be 2.28 for a total resistance of 438 kilo ohms. The remaining resistance then is 292 kilo ohms. Finally, this is a variable resistor. It switches from resistive to capacitive at five ratings per second. So I can find the capacitor. 1 over RC is 5. This right here is essentially a variable resistor. The capacitor shorts out the resistor at 5 ratings per second. Here to that 0. So I can find the capacitor. 1 over RC equals 5, where R is your 292 kilo ohms. Solve for C. giving you C is 0.684 microfarads. And you bet your lead compensator. With the results shown as follows. The system faster, which is the purpose of a lead compensator, speed up the system. The price you pay is the input, the green line, is much, much larger. That's similar to your car. If you want your car to respond quicker, you got to floor it. The recompensator assumes you've got enough input that I can basically give much, much more power at the input to speed it up. 